dead spiders kind of wandering around over here now. Hey, 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 it's Rod Bergeron here with you today, and uh, we're having a look at um, this little barn scene here in Baltimore, Ontario, and uh, just north of Baltimore, Ontario, uh, on Hickerson Road. And I'll put a picture of it up here for you. So you'll see that there's a, a bunch of round bales of hay in a hay field that is partially cut. Part of it isn't cut. Um, I guess the thing that interests me here is that there's a bunch of triangles. If you look in the bottom left hand corner there's a triangle where the hay is not cut and then the other part of the hay that's not cut is also in a triangle that comes from the right hand side of the page almost all the way over to the left hand side of the page and then back to the right hand side of the page which makes a really interesting triangle and then of course there's the little barn in the background with a couple of little sheds and some telephone lines that go across there so we're going to try to keep this real simple today let's have a look at doing just a, a quick little thumbnail I'm working with a 4-H pencil and I'm just going to divide my page up I'm going to divide my thumbnail sketch up into thirds just like we always do like that um, I think it would be really interesting to have this um, hay field on the right that's in a triangle come across like that and then back like this the one on the bottom of the page to just have it come across like this and you can't really see where the hay isn't cut over here so we're going to leave that just like that then on the other side of the road there's a fence that comes across like this and you'll see that fence comes all all just past half on the far right hand side there's a another telephone line telephone pole I should say but sort of on the one third line is where we're going to put the barn I think the barn should come probably here that would be an interesting composition and then back this way something like that I think that would work and then right to the to the left of where this telephone pole is there's another little barn here that you can only partially see because the trees cover it and then down here there's also some round bales of hay uh, in the foreground here we have a round bale of hay which is really just a cylinder don't try to make it any more difficult than that there's a couple of them here also there's one that you can partially see here because uh, part of it is blocked by the hay that's not cut. Another one that's further down here and then one that's way down at the end of the field down there. Of course we have the trees in the background which come down slightly to the right. And I think that's pretty good. That's a pretty good composition I think. I think compositionally whenever you can get that many triangles going on in there um, there's also this little bit of driving shed that comes off this barn here that you don't see the bottom of of course um, I think we have to get the line on this a little bit better this line is going to slant slope down something like that okay so let's transcribe from our thumbnail to our main drawing. I think once you get your composition correct, it makes it a lot easier to transcribe it onto here. Again, you're going to split your page up into thirds, just roughly, just sort of line this up by eye from here to here, line this up from eye from here to here. The same here. We're not going for perfect here, we're just going for you know, a, a, a real simplified version of it. Um, I'm going to work in pencil and then I'm going to draw it in black sharpie okay so this line comes across on the one-third the bottom one-third line just past this one-third line and this one-third line is right here so I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to draw this line straight across like that 
and I want it to come back off the page over here. So I look from where I am, I look to where I want to go, and I draw the line. Okay, I want this to come, it actually comes just right straight across like that. And then you have another bottom triangle right here. And this one is actually going to come just past the one third line like this. Um, yeah, let's have a let's have a go at doing this with some uh, ink now. So I'm going to put Sharpie onto this. So I have my pencil. I'm going to put that away in my little cup holder over here. And I'm going to get out my pen. And I'm going to really just quickly and simply put in these telephone posts first. We also know that this is only barn board on the top and that it's concrete on the lower end. And I think I'm going to pretty much leave that as the drawing as it is right there, just like that. I'm going to get out my eraser. I'm going to tell you, there's students of mine that are laughing right now. <laughs> um, but I've been asked a couple of times about doing it directly in pen. And I got to tell you, I would normally just draw this directly in pen. And I wouldn't worry about it in um, graphite at all. But um, students of mine and other people have asked me about, you know, how is it that I do that? And so I decided in the last next couple of videos, I'm going to I'm going to lay it out in pencil first, so that you can see that it can be done and it can be erased. Uh, pen just gives you a really nice black line. Okay, I'm going to put my eraser back in my little pouch over here. I'm going to get out my Sennelier watercolor set and I'm going to clamp that on here just like that. I got my water bottle. I'm going to get out a little bit of the top back up on your water bottle. I have a tissue here for cleaning up messes like I just made right there. Okay, so I'm going to move this clip off there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the sky. And so I'm, not, I'm going for a sort of an unsaturated look today and I'm going to try that on the side of my page. That's the color I want. Pick this up. There's not much color here. so. And mix up a little bit more of that. We're going to let that go and see what happens to it. Kind of like how this blue is bleeding in like this and this blue is bleeding in like this and we have this little white patch in the middle. Brilliant. All right, so we have a lot of greens going on here. The dark greens are going to be all up in here where the, the trees are. The light greens are all going to be down here on the field. I think the lightest green is this part of the field right here. And I think we should probably do that now. So I'm going to wet my brush. And I'm going to do this wet on wet. I got a little bit of blue in this water. So that's going to be okay. Don't worry about the blue being on the page. We're going to paint the... We're going to go around the bales of hay because we're going to make those a slightly different color. Green, put this into this. Pick up a little bit more water. A little bit more water yet. All right, let's put that in. 
in here, see what we get. So this is wet on wet. I want to make this a slightly darker green what would I add to it well the answer is going to be you're going to add a little bit of blue to it if you want it to be a slightly darker green you could also add a little bit of black to it but I'm going for a bright vibrant painting here I'm just going to pick up a little bit of blue that's too much blue but that's actually a really good green see what green this is it's a really good green for some of this in the background up here all right let's work on this area over here a little bit we're going to get a little bit of um, sort of a lighter green here, this green. fill in and put a little bit more water on here in some places and get that to run together a little bit more remember we're you're we're you should not be going for my version of this you should be going for whatever your whatever the way it is that you think about this I'm just taking some of this wetness and I'm dropping some of this very dark wash that we have here into this wetness and I'm just going to let it lead around to wherever it is that it wants to go. Just like that. And it'll probably bloom in here and it'll probably create some nice tree effects for us don't really want this bleeding across the bottom here so I'm just going to do that so that'll stop bleeding into there okay so what we have left to do here is um, the barn and the little garage and what it is that I think I'm gonna do with this barn is the top of it is reading a little bit blue because it's a little bit um, in shadow and I'm just gonna stick this under here for now it's a little bit in shadow, uh, but it's really a metal roof. This, the same as, as this right here is a metal roof. So I'm going to work wet and wet here, but I'm not going to make this very wet. I'm still in shadow right this minute. Uh, my, sh my shadow is decreasing by the second. So I would ask you, what color, what color are we missing in this? We have green, we have some blue, we have, a, you know, this is sort of a yellowy kind of a green that's going on here, but what are we missing? And what we're really missing is red and orange. And so I would say to you that this barn right here is, um, dark brown it's gray actually in the in the uh, video of it but I think that this would stand out much better if this was a reddish brown barn and I think this would stand out much more if it was a reddish brown or red garage and I think what we have to do in this is we have to consider um, can we make this reddish brown is it something that we want to do and I say to you it is something that we want to do because it's going to have it's going to be the complement red is the complement to green 
and orange is the complement to um, blue, I think we need to have a reddish brown, orangey, brownish sort of barn going on here. And I think it's going to make our painting much better if we do that. And if we put this on here, you'll see that barn, that little shed just jumps off the page because it's now brown and it has a really good uh, contrasting, uh, a good complement to this blue in the sky. I think we're going to take that and we're going to do that same brown on this little jut out on our barn here. And we're going to put our strokes in top to bottom like that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a little bit more water and we're going to put a little bit of a wash here on our barn. Just like this. A little bit more. I'm going to mix up a little bit of that Sennelier red and put it into this. So I'm going to put a little bit of more water into this brown. I'm going to put a little touch of brown into this, stir it in there, mix it up really well. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red, just a little bit of red, and put it into this. And I'm going to try it on my page. You'll see that's a little bit, quite a bit redder than what we currently have on here. And we're just going to let that bleed. To wherever it wants to go. Just like that. We're going to take a little bit of this and add it to this wherever it's wet. Put a little bit more red into that or, or not. Whatever your personal choice might be. And I think this one is done. Look, I got a little wee tiny red spider wandering around there. Um, you know, one of the joys of working outside is that you're out here in nature. You're experiencing all this. You're out here in the sunshine or trying to find some shade. You have the wind around you. You've got the bugs. The birds are singing in the background. It's just a lot more fun than being in the studio. If you learned anything from this, please click like. I really appreciate everyone who uh, clicks like or leave me a comment. I really love to hear from you. I want to know what it is that you want to see in the future or what it is you don't want to see in the future. If you're currently a subscriber, I thank you very much. And if you're not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot for checking me out and uh, we'll see you again next time.